Hello folks, this is Joe Moscato. I'm the host of Joe Talk. My guest tonight is a good friend, Ron Turner, a photographer, an artist, and a gallery owner in City Island in the Bronx. Now, basically you've been a community activist in City Island and a fixture for approximately 45 years. What got a Bronx boy back or into City Island. What was your motivation to set up shop and live on the island? Well, well, first I'd like to thank you for inviting me uh, to your show. Uh, it's an interesting uh, history. I had no idea I was going to end up on City Island. I was... Uh, going to uh, Lehman College um, at night as an art student and uh, I was a full-time uh, photography student at Jermaine School of Photography. Uh, the only thing that I could figure out is that I got on a mailing list and there was the first arts and crafts fair on City Island that was put together by an organization called the Renaissance Association. And I got a mailing uh, saying if I wanted to show my artwork. So I had my photography portfolio. I was just about to graduate from Jermaine uh, School of Photography. So I had my portfolio and I thought I needed to do something with my work and I always had the dream of uh, opening up my own gallery and showing my own work. So uh, I went to show my work at uh, City Island to the organization. And uh, what I found there were a group of artisans and artists uh, around my age, you know, the hippie mo movement. We were all uh, hippies at the time. And they opened their arms to me and loved the work that I did. And they uh, said that I could definitely be part of the uh, Arts and Crafts Fair. Um, the experience of being in that Arts and Crafts Fair and being on City Island, right away I saw the magic of City Island. It was a place that I wanted to live and uh, to grow as a photographer. I thought that this was the place to open up a gallery. The person in charge of the Renaissance Association was a man by the name of Warren Sonberg. And he had what was called uh, creative mud pottery. He was a potter at the time. And uh, we became very good friends. We're still friends today, but now he's a sculptor living in Costa Rica, doing monumental pieces. Very talented uh, man. And uh, he helped me find my first store. And that was a huge space. It was, uh, the address was 296 City Island Avenue, right in the heart of City Island. Uh, the space was a, uh, a storefront, walk-in, uh, as big as a loft. But the only problem, it didn't have heat or hot water. But that didn't deter me. I decided that this was a perfect space to open up a gallery. And uh, I got a potbelly stove uh, with the help of some city islanders. Uh, we put copper coils around the potbelly stove and uh, fed the cold water through that. And when the stove would be going, I would get some hot water. And uh, I lived like that for, in that first space, for four years. And I think... I don't know. Uh, we've known each other for a very, very long time. Did we meet 
in the first gallery? Do you remember my living in the back of the store, or was it the second gallery? It might have been the second gallery, but I do remember the story about you almost burning the gallery down. Oh, yes. Because of <laughs> A lot the, of accidents at Actually that time. living in there at, uh, at the time, yeah. uh, squatting there at the time. So, obviously, you know, you were a dangerous person <laughs> to be a tenant for, for your landlord. Well, uh, she didn't really know what was happening. Fortunately, she wasn't on City Island. Um, I was used to growing up in the Bronx in uh, a walk-up in a tenement, <clears throat> and if you wanted uh, heat, you'd bang on the radiator. Now I had to survive by uh, chopping a lot of wood and uh, you know, learning what it meant to make a fire quickly and how to do it safely and not, uh, like you said, burn the place down. But the hard way. I learned the hard way, trial and error. I learned what a chimney fire was about. I learned what backdraft was about. And when I switched to coal, I learned what uh, coal gas was all about. So uh, yeah, I've, I, I had a number of uh, experiences, but nothing did burn down. And I'm still here to talk about you know, those experiences with a smile on my face. I did singe my eyebrows once, but um, it was a really good training ground for me uh, in photography, in art, and in people. Uh, living in the back of the store, uh, having the studio, and uh, having the gallery, I was constantly surrounded by artwork the people who would come in uh, to talk to me. City Island was still a boat building community. The people were very, very interesting. Uh, I was fortunate that they accepted me into their community and embraced me and made me uh, part of their family. It was back then a much smaller community than it is now. I started out showing my own work and I quickly saw that just showing my work was not enough, that I needed to show other photographers, painters, sculptors, printmakers, to show their work as well. And I started giving one-person shows, the maximum two-person shows, and maybe once a year a big group show, like a holiday show. And I did that in the beginning, uh, and that continued for a long time. As a matter of fact, what I started to do when I got involved with the Bronx Council in the Arts, um, which was due to Bill Aguado, he was the director of the Bronx Council at that time. He encouraged me to become a member. Um, I think by that time I moved to 278, which was across the street from the Black Whale. It was a great location, just a block down from where the old store was. Now I had heat, hot water. I wasn't living in the back of the store anymore. And um, I started jurying the shows. And I think, as a matter of fact, you submitted work a number of times. Correct. But I wasn't the only one to make the decision. Uh, what I did was, uh, because I didn't always want my taste to dictate what was going to show in the gallery, so I asked some colleagues to help me in deciding what was going to be shown. And the people I asked was Joe Cumo um, and Don Nesta and myself. And occasionally, I would invite two other people to help. But it was primarily me, Don, and Joe. And the reason I did that was I liked everything. Joe was more into photojournalism. And Don was a pictorialist. So I thought there was a good balance there in terms of taste and what was going to be picked to be in the show. And that went on for 
a good number of years. That's how we juried the show. That's how I would get work from actually all over the world. Uh, not just local, but I remember getting work from China, from uh, Latvia, to name a couple of places. But after a while, I decided that I had to uh, stop doing that because uh, the shipping of the work back and forth was just too taxing for me. Um, the gallery was supporting itself. And, I, and, and if you remember, uh, the jewelry and the crafts, which uh, Nehru, my second wife, uh, helped me with in the gallery and actually created, uh, was supporting the gallery. I was selling a lot of jewelry and crafts, uh, allowing me to not have to charge any artist a fee to be in a show. Uh, money was uh, coming in on a regular basis, allowing me to do my artwork uh, without having to do any commercial work. Uh, it uh, was a good time economically. After a while, I think I was in that space for six years, I then went to the location that I'm in now, which is uh, 321 City Island Avenue. Um, things were still going pretty good, but I saw that the revenue began to decline, and that was in conjunction with the... Uh, Internet. Ron, I think we're going to go for a break. Okay. Give us a couple of seconds and we'll be back. All right. Okay, folks, we're back. One thing that I always recalled uh, that you previously had a, an art show for kids. This is going back years ago. And I was always curious why at that time we had stopped the show or you had discontinued the show. What was the re rationale or the reason behind that? Oh, it was financial. Um... I was uh, giving the show to young artists. I've been doing that for over 20 years. Very quickly, why I started doing it in the first place was because the public schools cut out the art program, especially on City Island. They fired the teachers, and I was upset about that, and I thought there was a need to encourage kids to make artwork. 
So that's when I came up with the idea of uh, Young Artist Exhibition. Um, and again, I, I mean, I, I pretty much paid for the matting, for the framing, for the hanging, and was able to afford to pay the rent of the store to show the work because it was a non-commercial show. The work was not for sale. It was not a contest. Uh, I couldn't afford to do it anymore. I had to make money. And I stopped for a while because I, at that time, I started charging to hang work in the gallery so I could pay the rent so I could stay open. And that's when you came forward. Well, if my recollection is that uh, we had this bottle of wine and it was like about 80% finished and you would off be the last glass. And then we started talking about the kids and I started feeling sorry about the kids because I felt this was very important for the kids' self-realization the kids would learn something about themselves, and it was a shame that the community and the city left you high and dry. So basically in 1913, excuse me, 2013, we started the kids' show up again, and I pretty much, uh, you know, paid you a certain amount of money for the rent, and we started the kids' show up again. So now, where does the kids' show stand? Before, initially, it was mixed Bronx and outside. Now we have kids coming from Washington Heights. Yes. How did that kind of uh, aspire? Um, when you came forward and with your generosity and said that you would help me financially uh, support the kids' show for the month of April, which is when I, I designated all the young artist shows was always in the month of April for the entire month. Um, the advertisement went out and um, Tiffany McKnight got in touch with me. She was a, uh, at the time, one of the young artists that used to show many years ago in uh, the young artist exhibition that I put together. Well, now she grew up to become an art teacher. And uh, she said, uh, is it OK if she brings in some of her students' work? And I, you know, it was a reunion for us. I hadn't seen her in a long time. And uh, right I said. Right now, Ron, we have some pictures we want to show. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's and take a look. things that you picked and, and I picked. Oh, there's Tiffany. She's in the middle, and uh, those are two of her students. Um, so she, she came in with not a few of her students' work, but she teaches the entire school art, and I don't know, I, that's gotta be over 100 students, and she brought in this amazing body of work. And uh, she, made it very easy for me to fill the gallery space with young artists' work. And her students were exceptional. She, she's, she's an outstanding art teacher. She's incredible. You know, I've seen her work, and I've seen the first batch of work that we had up in uh, 2013, and the newest batch is, like, incredible. And plus the fact they came back. I had kids that were here in 2013 who came back, you know, in 2019, which is amazing, and they expressed their, you know, their thanks for you having the stuff up and for me laying out the money. And that's the amazing part, because a lot of these kids are not artists, not photographers. They're doing something else, but it was key to the, their development that they had the, had the stuff up in a professional setting versus having stuff on the um, hallway or uh, different other places. Now we have also other stuff that we, so other pictures that we have picked. And again, this is the 
Well, this particular picture is not uh, the Young Artist Exhibition, but that's a, actually it's a one-person show of, of my work, and that just gives you an idea of the space and the crowd of uh, people that do come to the gallery. Uh, I try to create a nice atmosphere. As you know, right. artists can come and exchange ideas. It's unpretentious, and people can just, you know, have a glass of wine, a glass of soda, uh, some refreshments, and exchange ideas. That, that has always been uh, my goal uh, with Focal Point Gallery. I've always felt that uh, your gallery was like Noah's Ark. And it was a place, you know, beyond where you normally be. It was like a refuge in a sense, like you said. It's a refuge for artists, the people who appreciate the arts, people in the community that they know you support them and they support you. So it's really a little place away from everywhere else. It's a little city island because the people are very uh, adamant, very protective and very close-knit. So I go there. I mean, I've hung my stuff up there for, for years and years. And, like, I feel it, it's like, you know, a place that I can sort of, like, hang out. But other people, other talented artists have the feeling that they can hang out. It's not a Manhattan scene. It's basically um, a place where you can just be yourself. Yeah, definitely now, to relax. Now, we have another picture. And now we're back to the kids' show. Yeah, that, that's a sample of one of and the uh, Tiffany's students' work. You can see the quality is really exceptional. Excellent quality. And they ha again, we have a, a piece from the, the kids' art show. So these kids are very talented. They're not necessarily where they're going to go beyond you know, their school time or school age time where they're going to become artists, but they have the ability, the ability to learn, the ability to express themselves, the ability for people to, hey, th these kids are talented beyond what they're doing in their life. So this is like the admiration that the kids, a lot of them don't have. And the ability to learn, the ability to do something in their life that kind of counts more than like, you know, simple uh, learning. So basically, you know, this is what you do, and I'm happy to support you. And uh, there's so many things that I hope we, you know, we can do in the future. Well, it's. Uh, uh was definitely a start with you coming forward and saying we should definitely continue doing this. Now Tiffany has gotten the students very involved in raising money for the exhibition, yeah. which uh, also helps. Um, the format of the gallery has changed uh, in the sense that I don't jury thing, uh, I don't jury the artwork anymore. Uh, I make it now available to everybody to show their work. The kids' work was never, ever juried. If uh, when uh, somebody would uh, come in with their artwork, if there was part of the kids' show, it definitely would go like up. Like a two-and-a-half-year-old kid right. from City Island to a little crayon drawing that their parents were, like, ecstatic to see that the, the kids' drawing, the kids' work, was up with other professional artists, mm -hmm. with other talented artists. And I think that was, you know, made the day because the, ki the parents seen that you had a commitment to the community. Uh, the thing that I wanted to stress about the Young Artist Show was that it was not, and I would have to tell the parents, that it was not a contest. Right. It was not a best in show. There was no one winner, that everybody was a winner. Right. Everybody so what, got their work to be happy. seen, and it was not for sale. We had a wonderful evening. I'm happy you came. Uh, so all I can say is good night. Happy to have you. Thank you for having me. And uh, hopefully 
we will have another show in the future. Thank you and good night. Or better off, we've got a, a minute or two to well, even express, you know, more of the, the admiration that I have for you and the fact that I've had my career, in a sense, defined by being in the gallery and oh, starting I've... as a photographer and, and now I'm an artist and God knows what I will be tomorrow or what we will be tomorrow. Yeah, what I've, uh, I've seen your work grow over the years that you've been putting the work in the gallery. Um, the next show that is going to, uh, which I know you're going to be part of, right. is the big holiday show, which again is where I ask anyone to bring in their work. It's non-juried. If you want your work to be in the show, the work will go up. I ask a small a fee per piece of $20.00. And we have a fantastic opening. It can be any kind of artwork. No one is turned away. It's a meeting of the minds. It's a place to uh, see your work uh, outside of your own environment and surrounded by other people's artwork and a place to exchange ideas. And that's what I've been doing now with the gallery for, oh, at least 15 years. Uh, where every month I change the shows and people can put their work up. Well, I hope that we can go for another 45 years <laughs> because it, it's great, you know, it's great to be out there. I, my work has changed so much and grown so much, and of course yours. So practically, I'm very happy. Practically, you're your gallery is sort of like Noah's Ark or, or a sanctuary, and I'm very happy. Well, I'm, that we, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to get that you've been part of it. And hopefully, people will kind of like congregate and we'll do better the next time. Thank you. Thank you very much for having for me having the opportunity of having you on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs>